Have you ever wondered why wasabi tastes so pungent? Reactive chemicals in wasabi activate TRPA1 or TRPA1, an ion channel in nociceptor neurons. A new cryo-EM structure of TRPA1 was recently published in Nature by Yifan Chang and David Julius's labs at UCSF, providing clues as to the molecular mechanisms behind many pungent and painful sensations mediated by TRPA1. I'm Monique Brewster, a graduate student. And I'm Rochelle Godet, a professor of molecular and cellular biology. We're both at Harvard University, where we study ion channels of the TRIP family, including TRIP-A1. In our paper, we review how the TRIP-A1 structure provides a molecular scaffold to understand how it functions. In this video, we'll provide a quick tour of the new structure, highlighting its main structural features. Here is a surface representation viewed from the side, with the cell membrane perpendicular to the screen. The outside of the cell is at the top. Trip A1 is a tetramer, and now we reveal one subunit as a colored cartoon. Let's tour the subunit from the N to the C terminus. At the N terminus is the inspiration for Trip A1's name, an array of 17 anchor and repeats. Here in Cyan is repeat 12, the first repeat visible in the structure. Repeats 1 through 11 were not resolved, suggesting a flexible hinge around repeat 11. As you see, an anchor and repeat consists of two helices and a hairpin loop. Repeats 12 through 17 stack together with a helical twist. Note that repeat 17 has an extended loop, which forms a small beta sheet with a C-terminal fragment. Next comes the linker in yellow, connecting to the first transmembrane domain, the S1-S4 bundle in lilac. Cysteines important for trip A1 activation by reactive chemicals are found in anchor and repeat 17 and this linker. As you'll see later, the S1-S4 bundle sits at the periphery of the tetramer, while the S5 and S6 helices, shown here in blue, surround the pore. Following S6 is an unexpected tryptomain helix, shown here in red. Running parallel to the membrane underneath the S1-S4 bundle, this helix completes a structural network, allowing allosteric communication between domains. The last visible feature is a long intracellular helix in green. This helix tetramerizes in the context of the full channel to form an unusual coiled coil. Let's explore the fully assembled TRIP-A1 tetramer by traveling down the center of the channel. Along the way, we'll encounter additional features revealed by this fascinating new cryo-EM structure. Our journey starts at the extracellular face, where two pore helices from each subunit, highlighted in orange, line the channel entrance. The channel has two gates, and these spheres mark the upper gate at the end of pore helix 1. Just below the pore helices is a newly discovered binding site for a trip A1 antagonist, depicted as green density. Given this location, the antagonist may act on the upper gate to close the channel. Further down, two residues from each S6 helix make a second constriction, the lower gate. We're now exiting the membrane, encountering the tryptomain helix. Just below is the linker, followed by the anchoring repeats. Recall that repeat 17 contains the important cysteines. Taking a step back, you can see that the linker and trip domain helix are well positioned to communicate to the gate whether the cysteines are modified by reactive compounds. Coming into view as we reach the cytosol are purple densities corresponding to phosphate-containing molecules. These bridge the coil-coil and anchoring repeats, explaining why phosphate-containing compounds are essential for trip A1 stability and function. Could removal of these compounds by permeating cations be the molecular basis behind TRIP-A1's characteristic calcium-dependent inactivation? The new TRIP-A1 structure allows us to generate both new hypotheses and questions about the molecular mechanisms of channel function. Read more about it in our review. <laughs> 